Hi, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to be encasing steel inside of borosilicate glass. Now you may have seen this before, but this was, well, YouTube stuff. Anyway, so for this first one, we are starting with uh, steel music wire and a glass capillary tube. Now this is a tube with a very small hole, so when I drop in these steel rods, they uh, stack on top of each other. Now the procedure here, I will be melting in between these steel rod sections and folding them over each other just like a tent pole. If you've ever watched any blacksmithing videos, you'll notice that um, that scale that comes off of uh, hot steel as it's being pounded out. And uh, we kind of get a similar thing, you know, high temperature steel, it, as it moves around the carbon comes off, the impurities come off of it. In glass, we get bubbles and, you know, black chunks of scale. So, uh, it's unavoidable. Um, in normal glass working, you avoid bubbles unless it's on purpose. Here I'm taking a three mil rod and just filling in gaps between the rods, covering them up, popping bubbles just trying to keep the steel encased. So I was still kind of having issues with bubbles and steel wandering to the outside of the glass and I wanted a nice thick layer so I, I just wrapped it up again and again just a nice thick layer over that over everything. So now that I have this nice big molten glob, uh, I just roll it on my marver to get that uh, tapered shape that I'm looking for. If you want to find out uh, what these are and what happened to them, check the link in the description. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so here I am going to switch handles to a cold seal punty, and that's going to allow me to just uh, break it off easily when it's time for the finishing steps. So now I'm going to melt off the back end, that thick handle, and then flatten out the back side of the piece, and then I'll go ahead and break it off the punty. And I didn't preheat my pliers, so that back end right there where I'm holding it actually cracked because of thermal shock. Okay, so for this next one, we are doing a similar procedure, except we will be having all the rods bundled together inside that little tube there to start out. And using a small handle like that was a bad idea, so, because the heat will just make it floppy. So I needed something big that could take the heat without turning into a noodle. And as I melt it in here, these rods kind of get sucked into the hot glass and uh, metal just loves to stick to hot glass, at least steel does. So at this point I really didn't have to worry about them falling out of the end there. Okay, so here I'm just going to close up the end. I'm trapping a huge bubble in there with the objects. And if this were a different type of material that I was encasing that didn't create bubbles, I would have the option of using a vacuum pump to suck out the air. Next I'm going to break off the punty and polish it off with my mini torch. And then I'm just going to let it cool down a second before I grab it with my tongs and pop it in the kiln. Coming right up, this next encasement is a nail. Okay, so to start this one off, we will be using a 12mm tube and just getting the end nice and hot. Once it's nice and molten, I'm going to drop that nail in there flat side first. And the hope is when I roll it on my marver, it's going to lock the nail head into place. Uh, so I'm going to add on a handle and I'm going to be pushing with both hands towards the flame. And that's going to create a nice gather 
uh, which I can roll on my Marver, and that's going to help establish a guide for the size and shape of the final piece. When doing encasements, it's important to know about something called the linear coefficient of thermal expansion. Now, this is just a number which uh, helps quantify how much a material expands when it is heated. Um, and so a larger number means more expansion, and a smaller number means less expansion. So borosilicate glass, that number is 3.3. .3. And, and carbon steel has a value of 10.8. So um, when hot, steel is gonna get bigger faster. So you can see where this would cause problems with encasements. So for instance here, I my diameter was a little too big, so I am just pulling it down and stretching it out. Um, you can see, Eventually, I'll, I'll be playing ping pong with my handles um, because one side would get hot and the other side would be cool, but the nail in the center would transfer heat over to the cool end really quickly, and so that opposite end would uh, continue to crack on me each time I switched handles. And uh, I eventually got it, but um, it's definitely no not really fun to play ping pong with cracks. As a side note, different types of glass have different coefficients of thermal expansion, or COE. And uh, borosilicate, for instance, is great for laboratory application because of its COE and its resistance to thermal expansion. Okay, and so we're in real time here, and I'm just finishing up the back end. You can see when it's not sped up that it does take a little while for the glass to cool down. And one thing you might not know about glass blowing is that much of the time spent is on heating and cooling between steps so you can have it at the right temperature for what you're going to do with it. All right, this one is also a nail. All right, so I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol, take a nail off my bench, clean it off, and you know, it's probably pointless since it was gonna bubble up anyway, but, you know, habits. And I'm gonna do this one differently from the last one by putting the nail into a cold tube um, pointy end first. And I'll be doing that same gather process, getting it nice and thick, and periodically rolling it on my marver. And I'm just gonna let that uh, tube collapse around the nail. So the collapsing process on this one ended up making some cool results. It actually looks like I encased a screw because of those spiral twists of carbon bubbles um, that are formed as I roll it on my marver and twist and condense and all of those things. So I'm just going to skip the punty on this one and just grab the end right with my tongs. And we're just going to do a quick finishing on the back. Check the size there and that's it. All right, I'd just like to thank everybody who made it to the end of the video. If you like it, hit the button, leave a comment, do all the things, and thanks for watching.